we have our LED with our current limiting resistor connected to the normally open pole on the right hand side of our relay and the anode of that LED connected in VCC across all of them we have the ground line for the load in this case the LED connected to the common pole to the ground on each of the relays as well as we have our flyback diode and reverse bias toward where our VCC line is going to run. What we can do at this point is go ahead and add in those VCC lines. All we'll need is a piece of wire in the same row that the cathode of those diodes we just added is in. Have it running up toward the top of the board, toward the moment where the momentary buttons and where our PMP transistors will be. Let's go ahead and add those three wires where the cathode of this diodes in this row of the board we need to add a piece of wire from here up the board so it can point in the direction of where our PMP transistors will be. We need to do that for each of these three circuits like that. When finished our board will look like this with our VCC line or what will eventually be connected to VCC connected on the right hand side of each of the relays coils in the same row as the cathode of that diode is pointing towards in each one. Let's look back at the schematic. Working with the high side we can add two PNP transistors in series with their collectors connected to that VCC line we just ran. The emitter of the second one should be connected to the collector of the first one and then the top one should be connected to VCC. Basically we're making that part of the circuit what's in between my two fingers. Let's add those to the board. Here's our two PNP transistors. You can look at the description for the part number possibilities. What you need to be careful about is the correct orientation of these PNPs. We want our emitter of the first PNP connected to VCC with its collector going down to the emitter of the second PNP when we put them in series. In the case of the PNPs I'm using, it just so happens that the flat side would be pointing to the left looking straight down on the breadboard that's why I drew it this way in the schematic but the PMPs you use sometimes the pin out is not always the same as this find out which of these two outer legs or even sometimes the center leg which of them is the emitter versus the collector is take your negative probe your multimeter put your multimeter in diode check mode put the negative lead here and then Put your positive lead, touch it to this leg, write down the reading. Touch it to this leg, write down the reading. And whichever of the two has the higher reading will be your emitter leg. Whichever of the two has the lower reading will be your collector leg. And once you know that, then you will know whether flat side to the left will actually work in your case. Yours may have to be rotated and be in that direction. It's just a gotcha that's sitting there waiting to catch you. You definitely want to make sure which of these legs is your emitter and which is your collector. That being said, we need to add these PMPs to the board. The lower PMP, its collector, will be in the same row as this red line we just added. There's the collector leg of this lower PMP in the same row as that red line we just added. Collector of this PMP, emitter. And there's how that looks in the breadboard. The collector of the upper PMP is in the same row as the emitter of the second PMP. And the collector of that second PMP is connected to the red line we added from our relay. The next thing we need to do is add a wire from the emitter of this upper PMP to VCC. Like that. We just added this wire to the emitter, the row in the breadboard that the emitter of this PMP is in. We need to repeat this for each relay circuits. When finished, your board should look like this. The next thing we can add is this extra protection diode that protects these PMPs from any back EMF that might be generated when the magnetic field of this coal is energized and then it collapses. This is just an added layer of safety. It's bypassing the PMPs if any voltage spikes happen to travel back up the line. 
it gives it a path to go around the PMPs rather than trying to blow back through their collectors. And so we just need to add a diode that I'm using, as I said, 1N5819s, but 1N5817s would probably be even a little better. They have a slightly lower voltage drop before they start conducting, which is a good thing when you're trying to capture instantaneous voltage spikes or near instantaneous when a magnetic field of a coal or an inductor in general collapses. So we just need a diode circling those PMPs we just added. The anode of that diode will need to be connected to the VCC line that we connected the collector of our PMPs in, the same row in the breadboard, and then its cathode will be, need to be connected at the emitter leg of the upper PMP, the same row of the breadboard that we connected our VCC line. Let's add, add it to the board. Here's one set of our PMPs, and what we need is the anode of our diode connected in this row, where, the VC, where that red VCC line is, and then its cathode connected to this upper VC, VCC line. In the case of the diodes I'm using, it's marked by a gray band, that's the cathode, so we'll need to connect it in that upper VCC connection. And then it's anode in the lower VCC connection. Basically, giving any voltage spikes that happen to be generated when that the magnetic field of the relay coil collapses, giving it a path back up to VCC so that it can go to the rail rather than trying to go through the PMPs. And we need to repeat this procedure for the other two PNP in series circuit. Your board will look something like this. When finished. Moving right along, back to the schematic. At this point, we can add these 10K pull down resistors to the base leg of each PNP that we put into the board. We'll have a 10K resistor connected to the breadboard row that the base of the PMPs are connected in and have that resistor running from the base to ground. We have our 10K pull down resistor and we want to connect it in the row of the breadboard where the base leg of each of these PMPs is. In the case of the PMPs, mine, there it's right in this row. So that everyone can see that. The base leg, in the case of the PMPs I'm using, is the center leg and I want a 10K resistor connected in this row of the breadboard to the ground rail for each PMP, like that. Being careful with this diode that I've that we've jumped over, that you don't want your resistor legs touching the diode leg. <laughs> so just be careful as you're putting it in there so that nothing's touching one another. And now we'll need to add these 10K pull downs to the base of each. PMP. After adding those resistors, your board will look like this. With the 10K pull down resistors connected in the row that the base leg of the PMP is in, with the other leg of that resistor and the ground rail. Pulling the bases of each of these PMPs low, putting them in a conducting state so that when we apply power to this circuit, current should be able to go from the VCC rail all the way through those PMPs down to the coal of our relay. Once we, in this case, we're going to test. We'll take a, our jumper wire again and test that when we can place this jumper wire in the negative rail for our coal and put, apply power to the circuit and test that when we put the end of this jumper in the ground rail, our LED should light up the relay should close and light up these LEDs. We should test that for each of these before we go forward because that will catch if we've happened to make a mistake putting in these PMPs, if we've got the orientation wrong with the emitter and collector, or if we've happened to put a resistor in the VCC rail, one leg of it rather than the ground rail. If we've done it correctly up to this point, when we attach this jumper to the ground rail, 
our LED should light up. Let's test that. I've applied power to the circuit through my battery pack. I've turned it on. Now let's test. Taking the jumper wire, touching the ground rail. That green LED lights up. That lets me know that those PMPs are in a normally closed state. They are conducting because their bases are pulled 0 0.6, 0 0.7 volts less than what's sitting at their emitters. In this case, it's the VCC voltage. So we can move to the next circuit, placing one end of the jumper into the side of the coal, and then test the ground. Or just place the other end into the ground rail. As long as your LED lights up, you know that your PMPs are conducting. Repeat the same procedure with this relay. Okay, so we know that that part of the high side is complete. The high side switching is complete as far as having these PMPs in a normally closed state and when we ground the other side of the coil that triggers the relay and switches on our load. Or it energizes the relay's coil in turn flipping the flipper on the common pole up to the normally open pole which we have our LED and ground connected to. Moving right along back to the schematic.